Hi, I'm Ray from TechValleyEast.com. Today I'm going to take you through Movavi Video Suite 10 to give you some idea about what it can do. Here's the chooser that comes up when you first start it. And you can choose to modify, create, capture, or enjoy and share. Let's try editing. Alright, so here's the edit video suite. First thing you want to do is hit File, and then Project Settings, and PAL DVD. I don't know why that's the default. I've always put Custom and do 1280 by 720. Aspect Ratio 1 to 1, 48K Stereo Audio, and that's High Def. This is probably what you want unless you're doing older video. Hit OK. Now we're ready to open a media file. Hit Open Media File. Go to your collection of videos from your flip or whatever machine you're using and choose a couple of them. It processes them and puts them in the preview over here. At this point, you can just go ahead and preview it. And check the other one. Alright, so let's say I want this one first in the timeline and this one second. Just drag them down. Now when you play back down here is a tricky part here. Right click on the first one, hit play all, then it will play it all. Otherwise it just plays the segment you've uh, highlighted. Alright. Now you might want to transition in between these two. Instead of having it just change suddenly, maybe you want some kind of a crazy uh, effect transition. So hit transitions. And let's see, just for demonstration purposes, let's choose one that's really crazy. Uh, how about circle in? That should be good. And it gives you a demo of what it's going to look like. Just drag and drop that in here. And there you go. Let's try playing all. Okay. Do you feel like chicken tonight? Or maybe you feel like winner, winner, chicken dinner. Nah. I think we like this guy wandering around the yard. Let's leave him alone. Okay, so we're watching that go by. And those transitions coming up now as he starts to chase us. And there's the transition. Don't worry, it looks better in the finished product than that. And there you go. So that's the basics of how you get some video in there and start to edit. Now of course you're going on a file, save project. This is the most important part, especially since all video editing software can crash at times. And this is no exception. Alright. And now you're going to want to export it to something useful. This is again another tricky part because what do you want to do with it exactly? Do you want to upload it to the web, uh, like to YouTube, or do you want to save as a video file or what? You have to decide. So let's save for a mobile device, Apple, although there are a lot of other choices, iPod Touch, again a lot of other choices, save, and we'll call it something like chicken for iPod because you need to keep track of what format you saved it in, since there are a lot of similar file names. Save. And now you can watch the preview as it goes through and processes it. Now obviously the longer your file, the more processing time it will take. Also, it depends on what hardware you're using. I'm using an Intel Core 2 Duo, which is pretty snappy, but not as powerful as an i7 or a quad core. So, Basically, the more computing power you have, the better in video. And you can get boring saving video in various uh, video formats, but it's just one of those unfortunate facts of life that just uh, happens. And there you go. Now you can open the folder, and here it is. And after you save your MP4, you probably will want to check it out in the target device to make sure it runs. Now I have QuickTime on this computer and QuickTime should be able to play this particular type of video because it's meant for the iPod. You would hope it would be able to play it and it appears that it does. 
Now, you're going to have to play around with various output devices and uh, output programs because sometimes you're going to get the uh, bars here, the shadow box. It's just, uh, see that? The transition was better than it was originally. So that works pretty well. And there you go. Your, pro your project was successfully saved. Now I have to admit that sometimes if you make a long project or make a segment that's really, really long, uh, sometimes she'll crash. I hope they'll fix that. There's a help check for updates, and I'm hoping that an update that goes beyond 10.00 comes out one of these days real soon. But those are the basics. There are a lot of neat features buried in here to play with, so it will keep your attention if you can uh, withstand the frustration of an occasional crash. Okay. Now let's go back to the chooser and look at some other things it can do. How about screen capture? Well, as it turns out, I already have that running. That's how I'm making this video. Yes, I'm able to run this concurrently with actually editing a video. And it works, at least on a Core 2 Duo. So let's take a look at what's going on. Here's this capture screencast. It's running. I don't think I can show you the options here, but when you first bring this up, you have to change the options. They're not set to what you want. You're going to have to change the audio options to be stereo, 44 kilohertz or whatever. And you're going to have to play around with some of these other settings. Like the show cursor wasn't turned on, so you wouldn't be seeing me pointing to things. So you had to turn that on. So once you get that all set up and you get your volume level set up and your mic all squared away, now you're ready to start capturing sc uh, screencasts. So that works pretty well. Another thing you can do is you can create DVDs, Blu-ray discs, and so forth. Let's take a look at the DVD creator. Alright, so here we have Movavi Video Suite, create a CD or DVD. Now you can create video with this tab, or audio discs with this tab, or data discs with this tab, or copy a disc with this tab. So it's not just authoring a video disc. So you can add a file. There's our famous chicken video. You can add another file. All right, great. And you can edit this and put in a more meaningful name like well, I can't spell chicken. Oh well. But you get the idea. And uh you can uh decide on a DVD menu template. Uh maybe. Notice this loading 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 and it never does quite load the only way I found to fix that would be to exit the software and come back in again so now for the big problem with this and it wasn't this DVD template the big problem is okay I spent a lot of time setting up my DVD with the various segments and so forth and so on now how do I save this project or save the layout well I can burn create image Add, add folder, remove, remove all, create new folder is grayed out, edit, or exit. Wait a minute, where is save the project or save the layout? <laughs> there isn't one. That's right, you got to start all over again if you exit the program. Unless I'm really dense and thick and I can't figure out where the save the layout is. Do you see it here? I don't. Here, 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 there. Nope, don't see it. How about down here somewhere? Nope. Over here. It must be there. Maybe if I m magnify the screen, I put it up to full size, then can I find it? Nah, I can't. So, there you go. So I guess what I would recommend, see it went away without asking me if I want to save it or not. A uh, bit of a problem, isn't it? So let's go back into that again. Why, I don't know, but we're going to try it again. Glutton for punishment, I guess. Okay, now we've got DVD menu template, and it's over here, and it looks like maybe we could choose one. So let's, quick, before we have a problem, let's add these two videos back in. All right, great. And then we'll come over here, and DVD menu template. The road trip's pretty safe. Some of these others that I downloaded for additional templates have a little bit of an issue. So let's choose a safe one that I know works. 
You can edit that. And there you go. It shows you your videos and your chicken and all that kind of stuff. And you can change the audio. You can change what audio file you're using for the backup there. So, it's a great idea. And uh, it works. And the best part is when you make a DVD, you can actually play it on almost any video player. I mean, a 10-year-old DVD player might be a little iffy. But if it's any newer than that, it probably will play. So that's the good news. Uh, the bad news, of course, is that uh, it's kind of confusing what they had in mind with no save. And kind of confusing why their DVD menu templates are uh, so bollocked up. But there you go. It is what it is. Okay, now let's try converting some video. Movavi Convert Video and Audio comes up. Then we can add some video. Make sure they're checked. They usually come up checked. Make sure it's doing it in high quality. And then just simply hit, well, you got to put in the uh, what you want, what format you want it in. Let's say we're going to use it on a DVD eventually, so we want it in MPEG. And then put in a directory to save them. And then convert. And in this particular instance, I had a little checkbox called joining checked. Then these are the two chicken videos, so that's okay. So it's joining the two videos together which is handy. If you don't want that, you just uncheck the box. And it's uh, converting them. Now if you have a dual core Pentium or a quad core, it will do multiple ones at once, which is nice. And it opens the folder automatically to show you what it's done. And there you go. So now you could burn that to DVD or put that on some device that likes MPEG format. So that's about it for my quick review. There are some other features in here, of course. Some audio, some data, and some photo. And you can play around with those. And there you have some 3D things here I haven't played with yet. But that's uh, for the future. And uh, you can also capture video and VHS and TV, but you have to have a device installed that can do that. So, enjoy!